up guys? Probably you're getting bored because we are getting many equations and many deductions and probably the thing is you don't know when or how to apply them. But just trust in me, know how to get those equations because in chapter 4 we're going to use all the equations we are deriving. So let's continue with the continuous flow reactor. The same applies for these reactors of course. If there is any change in moles due to temperature, due to pressure, due to the nature of the reaction itself, let's say one mole gives you two moles, of course you're going to have a change in volume. And you could also have a change in volumetric flow rates, which is also common. Now, you will not be able to apply the equations we just derived for continuous flow reactors in liquid phase or at constant volume, So, because essentially this is not the same as this. So, let's get started. By definition, concentration or total concentration is equal to fl the total flow rate divided by the total volumetric flow rate. How do we get that to this? Is pressure divided by CRT. That's how you calculate concentration. Now that's at any moment, and at the beginning you just need to add this subscript, the initial amount of flow at the beginning times the volumetric flow rate at the beginning is essentially the initial pressure times the initial compressibility uh, factor or well it's a constant, it's the same and the temperature must be the initial temperature so you got this equation 1 and you got this equation 2 please divide it and you will find out that actually just divide this here and this here and look out for V0 no, for V so you take away V0 you get this value Volume equals initial volume times this factor change, which is huge. You got the, how do they change the flows, how do pressure changes, how do temperature changes, and how does this C compressibility factor changes. So one thing here, we have a volumetric flow in terms of molar flow. Of course, volume depends on the flow. But the important thing to mark or to tell you is that the flow is conversion dependent so flow of any subject is function of the conversion of A as you get more conversion you're going to get different flows so let's try to force the conversion into this equation so at any moment we got concentration of J equals flow of J divided by volumetric flow rate at any time so we already got one expression for this, which is this huge stuff here. So let's substitute it. And we have everything or all the equation here. Now, let me just do some algebraic movements. I'm not adding or subtracting stuff. I'm just arranging. I got this FT0 divided by P0. The C's stay here, the flows, the pressures, the temperatures. And if you Remember, this is the definition of concentration or initial concentration. Let me go back. Yeah. So it appears again. Good. Now we got this total concentration times this effect. Now, what else can we do? Uh, okay, this is valid for anything for A, B, C, D, whatever. The only thing it change is this concentration and this flow. Everything is fixed. For example, the pressure is the same for any, sub, uh, any species. The temperature is also the same for any sp uh, species. The compressibility factor is also the same. The initial concentration is a constant. The total flow, of course, is the same. The only thing you got different is the concentration, which is based in this variable flow. Okay, we got this. Uh, one thing I want to tell you is that F of T, or the total flow, of course depends on the conversion. Why? Because if you know that F of A depends on X of A, F of B depends on X of A, F of C depends on X of A. So as X of A increases, F of A decreases, F of B decreases, F of C increases, F of T increases. So what I am telling you is, as the conversion of A goes to 100, 
you're going to increase products and you're going to decrease reactants. So of course if I have X of A at 20%, I'm going to have different value of flow or the total flow as if I were to compare X of A, let's say 80%. Okay, of course at 80% I'm going to have more products and those products may be moving the total amount of flow right here. So just keep in mind that F of T changes with conversion. Now let's turn the flow, the total flow to terms of conversion. That's what we want. We don't want to have F of T. It will be cool if you can change everything to conversion. So how do we get that? We can do it and hopefully you remember where do we got this. If not, go back to the patch and to the CST or the continuous tank reactors and we'll check out where do we got this definition. By definition, the total amount of flow is given by the initial amount of flow plus the change in volume, which is here, or the change in moles. And this guy times this guy will give you the change in conversion. Now, how do we... Volumetric flow in terms of molar flow, okay. Let's substitute this new equation. Let me take away that, yeah. This new equation will go and we're going to substitute it here. But where exactly? In this part right here. The good thing is that everything else is constant, guys. T is a constant, T0 is a constant, C and C0 is constant, P0, P constant, and volumetric flow rate is also constant. The only thing that is not constant is this flow or total flow at any moment. So yeah, let's suppose we just substitute that here and you can see this is one to the left and we get this which is actually the mole fraction and you get this delta times x of a. So let's change this to y of a and let's continue. Remember that by definition, epsilon is the mole fraction of A at the beginning times the change in moles. So this here is epsilon. I'm just going to substitute epsilon. And probably you are more familiar with 1 plus epsilon x than pressure, than temperature, than C factors. These are factors, these are constant. The initial volumetric flow rate is also constant. So as you can see, now we have volumetric flow in terms of conversion, because this is constant, this is constant, epsilon is also constant, the only thing that it's not constant is x, and that's awesome because now we have a function of conversion. So we got this before in terms of molar flow, but we don't want that, we want in terms of conversion, so look how we change this thing to this thing here. Everything else stays the same here. Okay, good. Now things are going more tricky. We're going to substitute that volumetric flow rate. So you have it here, sorry, you need to have this here. We're going to substitute all this huge stuff in here, in this conversion. Okay, so if you remember this table, please recall this table. And you have this and you have this. And the thing here, guys, is we need flow rate of J in terms of conversion. What's that? We need this here, this here, this here in terms of conversion. So how do we do that? Let's change everything to conversion. How do we do that? Is As we've done before, you got this initial flow rate. This is the coefficient, let's say B divided by A or C divided by A or D divided by A. We're going to see that that for a reactant is positive, for products is positive. And then we get this here. So let me go here. Oh yeah, that that was what I was explaining to you. What is this new value? Well, this value here, this value here, this value here, and this value here, of course. For A, it's always minus one. For B, it's always minus B divided by A because it's a reactant, reactant, product, product. And yes, you got this. 
The importance of this is that when it's reactant is negative, please guys, don't forget that, and the product is a positive sign. Now, once again, let's go back here. We're going to make our analysis here. We want those flow rates in terms of conversion. So let's continue. We got, we have this equation, okay? It's valid for every species. Now, we got this in terms of conversion, and we want this in terms of conversion. And the thing is, we actually have done it. Recall, we just got this value before, and we got this value a little bit before. So everything depends on the x and x. Everything else, this value, this value, this value is constant. And this value, and this value is also constant. So you have two equations that depend on the in x. And what means that? That if you divide that equation and that other equation, they will still depend on x. So we got our master equation here. F of j is here, and the volume is here. And yeah, everything is in terms of x a here. X a, x a. And if ideal is a thermal and no pressure changes, so no pressure changes isothermal and ideal gas, we will get this equation. But don't think we're going to use always this equation. We're going to use these equations the most. This is just the case in which it's isothermal, ideal gas, and there's no pressure loss. So I know, guys, that you are probably overwhelmed with many equations and many things, but I'm going to make you a summary, a visual summary, so you can get to understand what we done in these four or five videos. So good luck on getting uh, not confused. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.